Joining me right now is one championship featherweight, Emilio Urrutia. What's going on? Welcome to Kumute Radio. Hey, what's happening, big dog? Glad to be back. Hope all is well. Yeah, you, uh, you're you coming off your huge win against Errol Kelly last August. But before we get to that, I want to talk about, you know, where you got started back in the 305 Miami. How did you <laughs> begin just with martial arts? Um, with martial arts, so like um, I had a friend. I had I'd always been wanting to train, man, since I was like 15, 14 years old. I've always wanted to train martial arts, and I wanted to like do boxing at first, you know, like. Um, but there wasn't many like opportunities, or, or there wasn't a lot of gyms around, especially in, like in where I was from. And then when the gym started popping up, I thought like I thought I always thought to do like MMA or like to get into jiu-jitsu or boxing. So in Miami is like a lot of Spanish community, you know, so all my friends, they were like already retired and they were like 16, 17 years old. You know what I mean? Like all these, all my friends, they were like boxers as kids. And I'm like, damn, I never met nobody who was like still boxing in their prime. You know what I mean? And wrestling wasn't a big, uh, wrestling wasn't too big in South Dade. Uh, it was big, but it was pretty big. It was all right. But I always thought I was too old. It was fucked up, man. I always thought I was too old to train. Like when I was 18, 17, I thought I was too old already because all my friends had already been like golden glove, amateur, golden kids, boxers, and they were like retired already, you know? So um, I was kind of tripped out about that. And then, um, so for a while, I always thought I was just too old to get started. I thought like to have to be good and to get into it, you needed to be like, you need to start when you were as, as a kid. And then I remember, um, so like right after high school, then I wasn't like really doing much. I was working this job. I was like working in this construction job. And I didn't have really much going on, you know, I was like kind of like getting in trouble and stuff like that. And then I remember I was like, I had put myself in some bad situations. And then I remember my friend was telling me, he was telling me, he always, he was, he was the one that first told me, he's like, man, you should get into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He told me this when I was like a long time ago. And I never, and I never really triggered in my head, but I always thought I was too old. And then I got into, I, got, I started watching martial arts, the UFC, I was watching UFC and stuff like that. And then I really got into it and I was like a diehard fan for a while. And then I met my friend, my other friend, he was like in his mid thirties, this guy that I worked with, or like another guy that kind of like introduced me. And then he was telling me that I should come to his gym and train one day. And I was like, I can go. And he's like, yeah, man, for sure. And he's like, I do it all the time. And he showed me a video of him hitting pads. And this guy's like in his mid thirties, he was smashing pads like a badass. And I was like, yo, that's fucking awesome, you know? So I remember I went to the gym first, and like at first I was real nervous, man. Like I went in there and I looked in the window and I just dipped. I rolled out. It was like way too intimidating, you know. It was like all these dudes like jumping ropes, skipping ropes, like a pretty hardcore gym. And then I went back with him. He wasn't there. And then I went back with him finally like a week later. And I just sucked it up and I did it, you know. But basically, man, I wasn't like, I was kind of like getting into trouble. I was like not in a good crowd. And like, and then one, and then like a friend, like first the therapist, the guy who the, the therapist was, he recommended it to me, and then coincidentally, like just a short time later, another friend of mine also was training Muay Thai at the time, and he's like legit. He was sparring, and he would like go to class every day, and he was like super fit. So then that's where I kind of opened the, the, the that's kind of like what opened the door. I was like, oh, snap, I'm not too old. I can do this, you know, and I just remember going into the gym, and when I walked in, we're like we're, they start off with conditioning, like they warm up the class, and then the warm-up was so hard. It was like the hardest thing I ever did in my life. And I was dying, yo. We were like running around and we were doing burpees and squats and push-ups. And I just remember like dying in the middle of it, like sweating and going crazy. But I just was like, I was so into it, man. And like, I was like, all right. Like I just tried to, I had to finish, I had to finish the warm-up. I didn't want to like quit and back out and like stop, you know? But then I remember after the warm-up, we're like just doing like this basic drills. The guy's like blowing the whistle and we're like moving forward. Then he blows the whistle and like we move back. And I remember at that moment, like, it was crazy. Like, my first 30 minutes into class, he's blowing the whistle, we're doing this, and I'm like, yo, this is what I've been looking for my whole life. I've been wanting to do this and since I was a little kid. And I always, because of fear and insecurity, I didn't think I could do it. And, like, my, I, let my, like I, I let my fears basically get in the way, you know? Like, I let the intimidation of the gym get in the way for a long time and stop me from doing something I really wanted to do. And I'm like, damn, I, this is what I've been wanting to do my whole life. And ever since that day, I kind of like changed everything in my life so that I can train full time like a professional athlete. Changed my job, changed everything. Everybody thought I was crazy, you know? But I knew, I was like, this is what I want to do. I was like, this is it. I found like my calling. I know it's crazy to say, but it was kind of true. So the statement kind of like, you know, like MMA saved your life is kind of true for you, right? 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I would be a hot mess. I don't even know where my crazy ass would be right now. <laughs> yeah, well, but I went from being somebody with not much purpose, you know, to becoming like a, uh, yeah, just just change. Yeah, like everything, man. Like f- my whole lifestyle changed. You know, I became like super fit, super health conscious, man. Like just on um, yeah, yeah, changed my life hundred percent, brother. Yeah. So for sure. that that was the spark. Why did you decide? Hey, I'm gonna go to Asia. You have you you know you didn't you didn't have any fights in Miami, right? So what? Yeah, what, yeah, what, I fought what, in Miami. Oh, you did? Well, yeah, I was amateur. So in Miami, um, in Miami, you have to have five amateur fights before you go pro. So they had a rule, oh. and they had just made that rule like just when I was like ready to fight. So I've been training for a while, like getting like knowing that I wanted to go pro or at least fight because they had some amateur. But then they, when they made this rule, it kind of made it hard to go pro. It's like to go pro, even if I was ready. I would have to like leave the country. I would probably have to leave the state and go somewhere else and fight pro and come back unless I get those five amateur fights in the, out of the way. But to get those five amateur fights is kind of hard because, you know, it's in Miami. They have, we have a good amateur scene, but I had a lot of cancellations. I would train for fights, show up to the weigh-in, but nobody's getting paid. No contracts are signed. So it was kind of hard to rack up those five fights. It took me years, you know. So it took me like I was fighting amateur for like about a year, two years before I could make my pro debut. So I finally got my amateur fights out of the way. And I was getting ready to make my pro debut, and that's when I went to Thailand. But since the day that I started training, I've always known about Thailand because the gym that I signed up to, all the guys, this was back in the day, like 2008, 2007 or something like that, they had done like a group field trip to Thailand. All the pro fighters already at the gym. So like this gym had like, it had all the coaches, it had like the main coaches, but then all the fighters, and they all did like a field trip, like, like 30 of them went to Thailand. And they all went at different times. So like maybe like, so when I first got to the gym, they were talking about how like, oh, hey, I'm your coach, this and that. And then my boy actually, Joe Ray, was teaching the beginner classes and stuff like that. And he was like a pro fighter um, out there at the gym that I signed up to. And so when I was signed up, they had like some guys, some like substitute teachers teaching the beginners classes. Cause they're like, oh, um, your coach is in Thailand right now. He's learning Muay Thai in Thailand. And then they were releasing these YouTube videos back in the day. You can still see them now. It's crazy. From like, there was no Facebook or anything like that. It was only uh, YouTube and stuff, you know? And yeah. they were releasing video blogs though, before people even did video blogs, like of like showing the Tiger Muay Thai camp. And they actually did a seminar at Tiger Muay Thai. So they were trading out jujitsu because these guys were like high level black belts already, like already going to Abu Dhabi competitors had a big name and like these guys had a big name in Miami. They were like the other gym besides American top team. There's this other gym and there's like two main gyms in Miami. I ended up going to the other gym that wasn't American top team. So they were already in Thailand. So when I had first signed up to the gym, that was always like kind of like my dream. I want to like get good enough so that I can go to Thailand and train like these guys were. These guys were like short videos of like Tiger Muay Thai back in the day. And the road was nothing. It was like just Tiger Muay Thai and a couple of restaurants and the motorbikes, and they were showing, like, the scenery and stuff like that. And then uh, that, on top of that, I also read a book, uh, The Fighter's Heart. And in the first fucking paragraph of the book, the guy talks about training in Thailand, living in a little bungalow, on, like, a little hammock, and talking about how he was, like, in the jungle training Muay Thai. And then when he would look outside of his bungalow window in the woods, he would see, like, elephants in the jungle and stuff like that. So I had that image from the fighters from the book where I was like, damn, I got to do that. I want to go to the jungle and train Muay Thai like kickboxer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then when I got to um, then when I got to the gym, all these guys were out there releasing videos. like, And then, like, like I said, my friend Joe Ray, he became like a big deal because he was only going to go for a month and he ended up staying for like nine months. And he built a huge name out in Thailand. He was like one of the first uh, like foreigners – um, especially from the States, you know, like to, to build a name, he was like knocking everybody out on the Muay Thai circuit he had fought like 15 times. So then he had came back. And when he had came back the first time around, he was left from, he came back from nine months being in Thailand. So he would always tell me about it. And he was helping me out when I first started too, you know? So my goal when I first started training would always to like get good enough to train, to go to Thailand and train, you know, but it's just so expensive, man. Like, yo, I was like 20 years old to spend $2,000 on anything, let alone a plane ticket was like absurd, you know, especially for a motherfucker that never had like, I never had more than like 500 bucks in my pocket at a time. You know, I was working paycheck to paycheck. 
you know? Yeah, for sure. So I pulled out a student loan. I did a gangster, yo. I pulled out a student loan, and with that student loan, I used <laughs> that shit to get a ticket, dog. I went to fucking, I went to school strictly for the student loans, yo. I was like, what? If I go to, if I, if I found out if I go to community college, I can, I can get a Stafford loan. My boy's like, yeah, you get money. I was like, what? So I signed up to community college. I got that Stafford loan. And I didn't buy shit with it. I dropped my classes. I dropped all my classes after like the first month. And I used that money and I bought my plane ticket to Thailand. Well, so now like, you're living the dream, man. Now you're living the dream and you're out there. But, you you know, you've been out there for a minute now in the struggle. Yeah. It's not easy to be a fighter anywhere in the world, even though you might have a little bit of money in the beginning, right? So did you have yeah. any point throughout the years that you've been in Asia to like, you're thinking like, hey, man, is this going anywhere? Do I, should I just drop everything and go back to Miami, go back home? Did you ever think that? No, nah, never, never. Because the minute I got here, the pieces all kind of like fell together, you know? Like I knew I was in this for the long haul. Like I was uh, 26 when I moved, when I first came to Thailand. So I told myself I was going to live this grind till I was like, I was like, I'm going to go for it. This is actually what I told myself, yo. I was like, yo. I'm going to live this grind, this struggle for as long as I can. If I got to live in people's couches, I'll live in people's couches. If I got to fight for fucking 10,000, if I got to fight for 300, $200 USD, I'll fight. I'll do whatever it takes. I'm going to live this life. And then I said, when I'm 30 years old, I'll reevaluate it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this grind till I'm 30. And I was like, when I'm 30, if I'm like fucking getting knocked out every week and I suck, I'll accept it and I'll go home. So I told myself I'll do like a reevaluation at 30. But it's funny because like rest when I turn 30, I signed the 1FC contract, and that's like, that's it, yo. I'm gonna, you know, I got my brown belt. I was like, yo, I'm gonna become a world champion, you know? So it's kind of cool. Like, right at the stage when I told myself I was gonna reevaluate what was going on, and yo, maybe a little bit, you know? Like, I had some tough losses where I, maybe, like, if you ask me, like, a week after those losses, I'd be like, man, I'm, what the fuck am I doing? Maybe I gotta go home, stuff like that. But in the long run, uh, I, I've, I've had that tunnel vision, you know? Like, that, that I mean, you gotta be kind of crazy to think like that, but. You know, I guess that's, that's just what it takes, you know? You got to have that stupid selfishness, you know? That, sub, you that stubborn. That extreme confidence, right? As yeah, a yeah. It's like, that, it's like that false confidence that you almost need. Like that ignorant confidence that you have to like, you have to believe and even nobody else believes. You got to believe so much that everybody thinks you're crazy, you know? That is good. Now, let's go to your one championship debut last August in Malaysia. Wow. You had a huge debut against a, a veteran you know, of one championship, Edward Kelly. When you go back and look at your performance, how do you grade yourself? I don't know. I'll give it like a six, like maybe like a five. It's like over a five because I won. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I definitely made a lot of mistakes. And, um, but I feel like that it's all worked out well because um, yeah, I'll give it like a six, seven. You know, it was a big fight, yo. So I'm not going to, it was my toughest fight up to date. This guy. I was knocking everybody out, you know, knocking out good guys, big names in 1FC too. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't fighting jabronis. He was ranked, you know, top 100 world ranked, you know. So I got world ranked after I, after I won that fight. So it was a big fight. But you know what the key with that was, man? Like, now the difference is, like, I believe, yo. You know, and I think when I took that fight, I knew I could win, but I wasn't sure. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if the confidence was maybe – if I had that confidence that I have now – you know, I would have had a 10 out of 10 performance. I probably would have took that fool out in the first round. You know what I'm saying? But I almost let the hype get to me for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. everybody's like, oh, he's had so many fights, this and that. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I gave him too much respect. You know, I should have went in there and not even thought about it. Like, if you see, like, in the first minute, I was kind of like, ah, oh, shit, letting him kick me and stuff like that. You know, but once I got into the rhythm, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I feel like I was a little bit holding back. I didn't want to, like, gas out. And I didn't want to get, like, laid out. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? So, like. I judged myself hard because of the decision. You know, I, mean, I, I you know, maybe I should have pushed a little more, but it was a great debut, man. It was, it was honestly like I'm, I'm pretty good with it, yo. Like I'm alright with it. Yeah, a lot of people felt that it was a great debut. In my opinion, it was a great debut. You showed a lot of, uh, I think, different aspects of your game compared to like your earlier performances in other promotions around the region, uh, yeah, and that's you. why the promotion is giving you a, a bigger fight now, a bigger name. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you think so? I don't think so though, yo. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like the name is bigger, but it's not the fighter. I feel like the fight is not. I don't know. It's weird, right? It's like it's a bigger name, but I feel like Edward was definitely like a little bit more like. He's more know, experienced. He more, more dangerous. More experienced. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
dangerous and experienced, but this is a tough fight. Yeah, for sure. So the next fight you got is Bruno Pucci, right? Yeah. Like I said, like you said, a bigger name. Uh, yeah. January 26th, not too far out. Um, how is the weight cut and all that stuff going on? Yo, I'm on weight right now. There is no weight cut. I'm eating, but yo, I'm eating like a, I'm, I'm training like a Super Saiyan, dog. I'm like Vegeta and Goku right now. I'm just in the hyperbolic chamber, dog. I'm training three, four times a day for three hours, four hours a day, and I'm just loading up on carbs, dog. I'm stacked right now. I'm 72 kilograms waking up after training. I've been like 71 the last six days, eating good in the neighborhood too, full plate, breakfast, four eggs, bacon, beans, you know what I'm saying? So I'm loving life right now. I'm, I'm in the best tip top shape of my life, yo. Yeah, it's crazy. And I got no, like last fight too, same thing. I didn't cut no weight. I weighed in at the weigh-ins. We had to weigh in 70.3. And after my fight, I was 69 kilograms when they weighed me after the fight on fight day. Right after the fight, when they checked my weight, I fought up the same weight that I weighed in all week long. So it's going to be the same deal even now. I might even get a little bit lower so I could eat a little more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to show up to the weigh-ins eating ice cream. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, everybody and, on paper, people are going to look at this and say, oh, it's a you know submission grappler versus a submission grappler. Uh, in your eyes, do you think that that's true? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's why, like, everybody's asking me, like, oh, asking me, like, if I'm worried about this guy's jiu-jitsu or whatever. I was like, listen, I'm, I'm not worried about anything, number one. You know, like, I don't worry about anybody's, what anybody has to bring. They got to worry about me. Like I told you last time, you know, we had the same combo. But I'm a submission grappler, too. You know, I got four submissions. He's got four submissions. You know what I'm saying? The only difference is I got double the wins and I got double the experience. And I think I fought way, way, way tougher guys. I already beat this guy. I fought, I fought a black belt with the same credentials as him in a phone booth in Full Metal Dojo. You know what I'm saying? In my first main event. So, like, yeah. You know, I feel like this is a great fight for me, yo. But it's yeah, definitely, yeah, it's going to be good, yo. It's going to be submission grappler versus submission grappler. You best believe I'm going to take him down, dog. And I'm going to throw those elbows. So, let's see what he's got. I want to see. Everybody talks about his jujitsu. I got to see for myself, you know? <laughs> no. He said that you're not a finisher, and you just mentioned to me that he has four submission finishes, you have four submission finishes, so that kind of sounds – do you think he's being overconfident? Nah, look, yo, he better not be, because if he thinks I'm not a finisher, I'll tell you what, I might have some decisions, but I know how to win, and there's nothing I haven't been in there, and there's a lot he hasn't seen in that cage, and I'm going to see if he wants to see that, you know? I've been in fights where I've been down around and I had to come back and win, I've rallied from behind to win. I've been able to beat guys for three rounds straight and win every round. I've been able to win by submission. I've been able to drop guys. You know what I'm saying? So, like, for him to say that, yeah. Like, it's funny he could say that. But you know what? I got double the fights that he got, you know? And he hasn't fought the caliber by guys that I fought. Those guys that he beat, I'll smash those guys too, probably even more decisively. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, ain't, I ain't buying that. I ain't buying that. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he's only got five wins, yo. And he's never been out the second round. So I want to take him into deep waters. You know, he says, I'm not a finisher. Let's see how much of a finisher he is in the second round where I don't go away. I'm not going to go away like these. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who he's been, what he thinks, so, but he's got a whole other animal now because I'm going to die in there before I leave. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll die in there. You know what I mean? And I know what it's like to be exhausted. I know what it's like to be dropped. I know what it's like to be down. So let's see how he can react when his chips are down because I'm not going to go away. You know what I'm saying? So let's see what happens when I get out of that fucking submission attempt and I get back up and I'm smiling and the, the lungs are burning and the heat is on in the seventh, eighth minute of the fight. Let's see who's the finisher. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now, but listen, don't get it twisted, yo. I'm ready, though. Listen, the last fight was the toughest fight of my life and it brought out the best of me. And I feel like this fight is going to be just as tough, but this is going to bring out the best of me, too. So that's why, you know what I mean? Like, I feel so good. The, the bigger the challenge, the, the better I'm going to do, the better I'm going to do, the more I'm going to rise to the occasion. So I'm excited for that opportunity. Like, don't get it twisted. I'm not sleeping on the guy. He's going to be tough as hell, you know, but I'm ready to go to war. You know, I'm ready to go to war. And if they got to grind him out for 15 minutes, I got to grind him out. But I think I'm due, yo. Hey, I'm long overdue, dog. So <laughs> for sure. I finish, son. And I throw heat, yo. Yeah. And you know what? The good thing about the last fight. If I would have got that submission, like in the third round, I got his back and he was able to turn into me. But if I would have got that submission, nobody would have seen my striking. Everybody thinks I'm just a grappler. But now people know that I can strike with anybody in the world, yo. You know, I went, I beat this guy in striking, I beat him in wrestling, and I beat him in jiu-jitsu. So, 
So now people know that I'm not just a grappler. You know what I'm saying? I can throw down, I can throw hands, I can take a hit, and I can, you know, I can throw some shit back. <laughs> For sure. You could catch uh, Emilio Urrutia at uh, oh. One Global Superheroes in Manila, January. Yeah, don't miss out, yo. Hey, it's going to be on the undercard, which is good. It's going to be on Facebook, so you can, ch- you can check it out for free. Y'all don't miss it. <laughs> also, you could go on YouTube. You could search The Way I Live. It's like a mini documentary of Emilio and his earlier career. I, I recommend if you're interested in Emilio, go and watch that. It's very interesting. It kind of gets into the mind of this man right here. Hey, man, <laughs> thanks for your time. It's good talking to All you. All right, brother. All right, awesome. Yo, we'll talk after. We're going to be talking real soon, dog. All right. We're gonna, hey, we're going to be looking for that after this. For sure, man. Thanks for your time, man. Okay, brother. Have a great night, all right? Cheers. All All the best.